Here's a good question. Um, how is how is doing visuals not fixing? Is isn't doing like if you're fixing something, right? You're you're. It means it implies that it's broken, and you're telling your brain that the alarm that it sent was was correct. It's affirming. Like, yeah, you're right. You're right. There, there. You know, we are in a state. There is danger here. Thank you for sending the alarm that keeps the alarm going. Usually, that's what happens with fixing. You have to change your your mindset and do things because you enjoy doing them, not because you're trying to get rid of something or trying to fix it. Let's say, like going for walks to burn cortisol because you want to be able to sleep at night. Instead, go for walks because you enjoy the walks and allow yourself to have the insomnia so that you become indifferent to the alarm so that the brain turns off the alarms because it sh you're showing it that you're safe. There there's no danger there, right? So with visuals, how is that any different? Like. I'm, I'm doing visuals because I want to get better. Isn't that fixing? So I'm, I have a conflict doing visuals because my brain's saying, hey, you're fixing. Here's the thing. We use visuals to change the program from survival to rest and digest. That's it. For me, when I do, do visuals, I did it for a bunch of reasons. Right? So... Visuals, all it's doing is getting you to sit and dose. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins, right? So that we can pull the baseline down, out of survival, right? We have empty our bucket in the process. We turn off alarms because what we're doing is we're, we're resetting our alarm system, right? We're introducing a new program of safety right and we're allowing the old program to morph into the new one so that's it we're just reprogramming we're not fixing because there's nothing to fix there's nothing wrong your brain is working perfect perfectly fine it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do it's following orders to the programming that you set not your fault. You were surviving all these years because there was a tiger chasing you over and over again with all the scenarios and situations that you went through in your life, right? The, the toxic relationships with narcissists, the toxic work environments, the surgeries, the medications, the, you know, the, you, your mom was a narcissist. You had, you were with a narcissist for five years. Your job was really hard. You got underpaid. You had to do two jobs at once. People called in six, a lot of people backstabbing you. What else was there? You were a boozer, you drank every day, you were a binge drinker, alcoholic, cigarette smoker. You were carrying all these 747s and not releasing them. Your bucket was getting full, right? And when you were surviving through that relationship, your baseline, you're telling it, you were in survival mode and your brain and body was supporting you during that time. It was helping you fight, stay in fight or flight. It was helping you fight or flee through that whole time. So you hardwired a program and your baseline had to be up there. It has to be to keep you alive, right? But now that we're not in that danger zone anymore, we're, in, we're actually safe now. All these issues are now over with. The tigers stop fucking running after you. The brain is still running an old program. And plus with our avoidance behaviors, our ruminating, right trying to figure it out we keep telling it that yes keep this program running even though we're at the beach we live we, we're right we're safe right now but i'm telling you other words right i'm i'm reprogramming even though we're safe there's no tiger here but i keep telling you there is i keep sending the wrong information over and over and over again and that's why we do visuals because we want to take one hour a day to at least get you to send the right message of safety and to get you to sit in the dose so that you bring that program of danger survival back down to reset the alarm system so it goes back to standby that's it we're just changing a program right technically any program is not broken they have their purposes they are working perfectly nothing's broken nothing's broken you might feel broken but you're not broken. You don't like the symptoms. Your brain's working perfectly. Perfect.
right now while you're suffering for the OCD looping thoughts and you got that mask on because you can't stand the smells, your brain's working perfect. Even right now, even right now, when you have that back pain, right? Your bladder's got stabbing pains. You got brutal, stinky farts and, right? Every time you, you put a little piece of tomato near your mouth right away, right? Working perfectly fine. It's running off a program. It's following orders. It's doing its job to keep you alive. And here's another thing. I, I, I like the visuals. Number one, it's because that's what I did to recover. It was powerful in my life. Powerful. Not just for the mind body. Right? I used it to tap into my, my spiritual side. To tap into the spiritual muscle. Right? To tap... Tap into consciousness to get those golden nuggets of clarity. Those synchronicities are massive. This journey was a gift. It got me more in touch with my intuition, with my with myself and my higher self. We're connected now. We're working together. We're a team now. My higher self can see things that I physically, my physical self can't see. So this is a powerful, powerful connection. Powerful team, man. And now I'm able to dial in the frequencies that I want and create my reality. Right? The, the things that we're learning, that we're training, we're training. This is like a training thing that happens when you feel sick. Right? It's a gift because all the, the, the things that you learn through this journey of recovery, it's like transferable skills because the, the, the methods are the same with life. Building the life that you want, you use the same methods. It's fucked up. It's crazy. It's like a secret law that nobody knows. But you you know now. You're gonna you're you're finding out right now. You're training. Also, the visuals are very important because it's a meeting with yourself every day. Right? You have a meeting, right, right here. Okay, we got our book, we got our calendar. Alright, we can take the 10 minutes where we're going through what we're doing, what we're working on. We got the post-it notes, we got the book. Here's my visuals, right? We're gonna, we're, oh, I'm dealing with this right now. Okay, I got my routine, 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 routine. Stick to the routine, right? We're not letting the brain hijack, hijack us in moments that we're doing nothing at home, doing fuck all. Brain's gonna hijack you, but we're prepared. We're moving forward. The only way to move forward is to constantly be planning and setting your routine and sticking to it, right? So you gotta be prepared. It's like going to school. You gotta be prepared. You have a meeting with yourself every day you set goals. I use the same shit for running a business. It's powerful. Some of the biggest business gurus that ever lived use visuals. I'm telling you, research some of these guys, right? Some of these big wigs, they did visuals. So there's so many good reasons. There's so many powerful reasons why. I really push this whole visual thing for people because it's good for health reasons and for creating your reality, relationships, your business life, right? And it's like you're setting goals in the beginning. You're, you're, it's like you have an office of yourself. It's like, what are we doing, guys? What, what are we doing, team? Right? You're, you're organizing what you're doing. You're setting your goals. We execute it, right? And how can you do that if you're just willy-nilly, you know, just casually living life? Yeah, I don't know. That's a cool idea. Mm, you're just casually thinking thoughts, but not really putting it down on paper, setting goals, having a structure, having a plan, having a guide, right? Taking the time every day to really set it, go, yeah, we're doing this. All right. So, okay. We're going to go, blah, blah, blah. All right. So tomorrow, then. Oh, yeah. I noticed I wasn't, uh, I should be uh, on top of that. Yeah. I, oh, old behavior patterns. Oh, I slipped with that. Interesting. Blah, 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 blah. Right. If you're not having the time of the day to get organized and to catch things that you're missing, you will get off the path so easy. So, this is what it's all included in your hour. Keeping track of stuff, making sure you're on the path, doing your visuals creating your reality, right? Having a meeting with yourself. Also, not just that, feeling feelings. Whatever was left over yesterday, if you're dealing with some shit yesterday that was intense, maybe you're angry, had shame, guilt, whatever it is, take the time, if it was yesterday or today even, 
right? You're like, oh, I feel a little bit of shame about this. I'm, I'm trying to distract from it. I'm trying to ignore it. No, this is the time where you release it. First, you feel it. Go, okay, I don't want to, ah, that guilt. I feel guilty about that. Take the time, go towards the guilt, feel the guilt. Go, oh, fuck, that's guilty. Ooh, yeah, I feel guilty. Or I feel shame. Oh, shame. Oh, that's so shameful. I'm so, oh, I'm such a, I'm such a dirtbag. I'm such a, oh, that's, that's so embarrassing. That's, right? Or the fear. Go, oh, fuck, fuck, I don't like this. Uh, let's go towards it. Let's feel it. Don't white knuckle, don't survive. Ah, love it, love it. Give me more. All right, that was great. Right? You're doing that with your thoughts. Give me more. Ask for more. Go towards it. Don't survive. Sit in the fear. Engage. Engage. Engage is huge. You got it. That's the end of the equation, the engage part. The quality engagement. So we feel the feelings. We let them go like a balloon. And then we engage. Because we don't want to focus on it all day. We don't want to be allowing all day that one thing. We want to eventually move out of that. We want to focus on something else that we prefer. So... This is the time. This is your one hour a day where you visualize, you get your downloads of clarity, syn synchronicities, you have a meeting with yourself, right? Create your reality, feel the feelings, let them go like a balloon. Like, this, it's not just about, you know, visualizing for your health. There's a lot of different reasons for it. But for the, you know, people that are wondering, am I, you know, am I fixing? No, you're just changing the program. And with visuals, is, visuals is a powerful way to do it. And here's another question. I get, or I see, some of these other gurus, they, they're they trying to cock block the whole visual thing. They're trying to poo poo it. Um, some people don't, don't like it. It worked for me. And this is what I teach and talk about, what worked for me, what I found worked for me. Right? And the thing is, you don't need to do visuals to recover. Of course not. Of course not. You don't need, there's other ways. You can just elevate, right? Raise your vibration, have play time, allow the thoughts and engage. This all brings your, your baseline down because you're, you're taking away the resistance, right? With my alarm system reset program, there, we do a bunch of things to bring down your baseline. All to, They work accumulatively to bring down your baseline together, to take away the resistance, to turn off alarms, to empty your buckets, right? All these things work together like a puzzle nicely. But if you, if you decide you don't want to do one of them, it'll still work, right? Still get there. And there are situations where some people, they can't do visuals, right? Because it affects people differently. Being in a state of fight or flight, it affects diff diff people differently where they just, they're not able to. The brain's cock block and you're like, sorry man, no, no, that tiger is more important than you fucking thinking about beaches. What do you, what do you, what do you, what the fuck, what do you, what do you? So that's fine. If that happens, this is what you do. You either make them up, right? If you can't tap into something in the past because it's, can't find good memories, well, then you make them up, right? I used to get a my my little tablet, go on YouTube. I used to type in Nemo's Dreamscapes, and I'd play music from the 50s and 30s and 60s, right? And I would create a, a past life that I lived and get the creative juices going and do my visuals that way. But some people are like, hell, but yeah, I know, but... What about the people that can't can't even do that? Okay, then this is what you do. Take the 45 minutes that you, you normally do visuals. Take that out. You still have 15 minutes left. Do 15 minutes. Fail miserably. There was many, many times where I was doing visuals, I failed miserably, and I only got maybe two minutes of good, or 10 minutes of the hour of actual work of visuals. That's okay. Especially in the beginning, it's going to be hard because your brain keeps fucking pulling you here and pulling you there and you know brains keeps going you know but the tiger and the, the, the lion and the, the and the goat in the field what about the goat no no the bear so still do that 15 minutes it's just like riding a bike practice 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 fail 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 for 15 minutes because you're still doing your your playtime elevating sessions you're still allowing and engaging right that's gonna st bring down the baseline by itself right and that 45 minutes that you took out of that section 
of visuals, you're gonna add on to your playtime, raising your vibration, elevating session. So you'll be doing an hour and 45 minutes. So you're gonna be dancing longer, you're gonna be doing whatever, crocheting, playing guitar, going for walks, right? Go, I already danced for an hour. Shit, I still got 45 minutes because I didn't do visuals. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go for a walk. I'm gonna listen to music while I go for a walk. Maybe I'll do some visuals while I go for a walk. Oh, this is so fun, oh my God, I'm gonna do so many, I can do, I can put this here, if it's that there, if it that, that. There's always ways that you can use the methods to your situations. You, you can figure it out. You can take things and change them here to, it, to so it suits you. But you can see why I love visuals because it helps me health reasons, business reasons, create my reality. I feel emotions and I let them go, right? It's a meeting with myself. Why wouldn't you want to have that time? I think it's really important because it keeps you on track. And if you're a person that's gonna take the visuals 45 minutes and put it into the other pillar of raising your vibration, playtime, elevating, you should still have a meeting with yourself every day, do it in your car, right? Plan out your day. So I have my routine, right? All set Monday through Friday and then my daily. I gotta get some lettuce and then I get some taco meat and then I gotta go get some coffee and I gotta fill some content and I gotta do my blah, 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 blah. This is for today. Right, you check it off while you go through it, right? So you have a the main schedule and then you got a, a mini one that, that's detailed for that special day, for a Tuesday, right? Then you're done with it, you check everything off, right? And then the next day, the Wednesday one. But the main one is here, right? And this other thing about visuals, I saw a couple of gurus, um, they were like outraged about how people, you know, say, you know, we should use visuals for, for recovery. And there's reasons why, but some of them like, I, this is like, um, just so okay, you do not need visuals to recover. This is an out. Like, I can't believe there's people like, wow. Like, this is not like, this is stupid. People should, you know, you know, how does that make you feel? How would you feel? How does that, what do you think that makes people feel when they, they can't do visuals and you're telling them they should do visuals? That, how do you think that makes them feel? I can't believe that. Some of these programs, some of these people, like, this is like, they're really pushing on the visuals. Like, how would that make me feel if I, how would you feel? Like, this is, I can't, wow, this isn't, like, this is fucking serious. This is serious. Hey, wait a minute, didn't you use visuals for your recovery? Uh, yeah. Didn't, don't you have, like, videos of you, like, doing visuals for people and stuff? Didn't you share your visuals, too? All of them? Don't you have a course on visuals? Um, yeah, that's not, yeah, well, whatever. So you don't, see, this is, that's. So you used it, and this is what, how you, you recovered, and it worked really good, so, okay. Don't you have like 2,000 visuals that you share with people in and through it with a folder, so they can get started on visuals? Hey, wait a minute, didn't I see you? Didn't you wear a shirt that said visuals on it? Visuals for life? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, your password to your phone, isn't it visuals? Yeah, but I'm saying you don't need them. Huh? You don't. It's funny, some of the mind-body gurus that have been poo-pooing visuals for all these years are finally changing their tune really quick like as if nothing happened and they're like oh yeah no oh no I've never I've always yeah visuals you know it's fantastic it's golden then you have the people that use them to recover you know and it was a big factor in their recovery are acting like it's this 
it's, it's, you don't need it, it's shit. So at the end of the day, you don't need visuals. You don't. But why wouldn't you? Unless you can't. And that's okay. You have, there's other options for you. Right? We can all recover different ways. Of course, of course. But, hey, I use visuals for many other reasons. And it's powerful.